Hi guys, Nada here and today I'm gonna try to clear some things up. Now in my recent uh, GPU videos, especially when it's about the budget ones like the 5500 XT and the 1650 Super, a lot of you were wondering why am I not mentioning the RX 580 and 590 and why do I think they're not really worth considering anymore at least for most of you. Well, the new cards actually use significantly less power and I know that a lot of you just hear that take it very lightly and don't really understand what that actually means so in this video I'm going to try to explain it a bit more and actually show you how much money you could be saving by going for the more efficient GPU and while I absolutely think that everybody should play a part in keeping our energy consumption down even if you don't care about things like that you should care about your own wallet now i know that some of you don't have to pay the power bill at the end of every month and you know you live with your parents or you use your computer and work and you just don't care how much power you use this video is not for you but if you do have to pay a bill every month or you're like me a parent with kids that have three gaming computers at home then keep on watching because some numbers here are going to be quite eye-opening let's go this video is brought to you by the new asus zenbook pro duo it features a stunning 4K OLED display and a second 4K touchscreen, making it the ultimate productivity laptop. Now, with the latest Intel Core processors and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060, it can handle any creative task and you can even game on it. Check it out using the links in the description below. Now, obviously, the total power you use is going to depend on your system, where you are and what you actually do with your PC and that gets too complicated. So for this video, I just thought to focus on the power differences between the older card and the newer cards and how much at the end of the year that is gonna save you or cost you money. So to do this, I made a gaming rig. I'm gonna leave uh, the specifications in the description down below if you wanna check that out. And on that gaming rig, I actually tested all three cards. So I have a 1650 Super from Gigabyte, 5500 XT from Asus, and I used the fastest OC RX 580 that I could find uh, from MSI. The reason I used that one is that the performance is actually quite high, higher than the rest of the 580s, and it's quite close to these cards as well as to the RX 590 that I actually don't have. But keep in mind, if you're thinking about the RX 590, it uses even more power than this one. So later when we get to the results, just add a bit more. Let's start by looking at the average power consumption of this system while gaming. You can see the RX 5500 XT and the GTX 1650 Super are much more efficient using around 80 watts less on average than the RX 580. And the difference in idle is big too, with the RX 580 using around 10 watts more when you're just letting your PC do absolutely nothing. To translate that into actual cost, we have to account for how much you're paying for your electricity. I decided to use two very different examples. The United States, where power is actually cheap at around 12 cents per kilowatt hour. And here, the Netherlands, where I live, and electricity is actually quite expensive at around 23 euro cents per kilowatt hour. Now with those numbers, we can now easily calculate how much it costs if you gain for one hour every day for one year straight. That is around 10 US dollars or 20 euros per year with one of the new cards, assuming your PC is off for the other 23 hours, of course. But that's not really realistic. So for the next step to calculate a more realistic total cost, I wanted to look at three possible types of gamers. The responsible parent who games two hours every day and has his PC idle for another two hours per day the fanatic gamer who games four hours per day on average and has his PC on for another four. And there is of course the Warcraft addict that never turns his or her PC off and has the game running about half of that time every day. With these terms set, we can actually calculate the total power cost per year for all of these scenarios and actually see how much of a difference your GPU choice will make. I suppose if you're a responsible adult in the US that pays very little for power, you won't care too much about the nine or so dollar savings per year, although almost 30 over three years isn't completely insignificant either. However, fanatic gamers, even in low power cost countries, really cannot underestimate the difference, which is around $17 per year or around $50 over three years. 
Now that can get you a new game or be a nice kickstart to buy your next GPU upgrade. And our WoW addict himself or herself will save $50 every year. Now things obviously get a lot worse for the RX 580 here in the EU, where we pay roughly double for our power. Even our responsible adult will spend around 50 euros extra in three years time if he picks an RX 580 over the new cards. And considering most of the quote unquote responsible adults I know actually fall into the fanatic gamer category, they're actually looking at around 100 euros in three years. And that is pretty much half of the price of these cards. And what about our crazy European WoW addicts? If you currently own an older card, like an RX 480, for example, that also uses a lot of power, if you buy an RX 5500 XT or a GTX 1650 Super now, you will actually earn all of that money back over two years in pure power savings, while getting some extra FPS out of it. Let's also not forget that the Turing architecture from NVIDIA and the RDNA architecture from AMD are newer and these cards will pull ahead in some newer game titles because games are more likely to be optimized for the newer cards and much less likely for the old, old Polaris cards. So they're actually more interesting from the performance perspective as well. Also because of this lower power consumption, they are actually quieter and uh, don't get as hot. So in theory, they should last longer and affect your other components less as well. So obviously you will have to do your own calculation to see how much money you actually save or waste at the end of every year. But it is safe to say that for any gamer that games a couple of hours regularly, uh, the new cards, so the 5500 XT as well as the 1650 Super, are more reasonable choices here, even if they cost a tiny bit more at the start uh, from the old RX cards. Now, I would say that the RX 580 here would be a good choice if you, you know, get one from a friend or you get it really, really cheap or you just don't care for your power bill because you don't pay it. But that is pretty much where I would draw the line. Now that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about content like this. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and see you in the next one. Bye!